Greetings friends, Dragon here once more. If it's your first time finding the channel, do please consider clicking that red button and giving me a subscribe. Okay, uh, one we did an unboxing for last week, uh, but getting into a quick film review. This is uh, Eagle Shooting Heroes from 1993, directed by Jeffrey Lau, uh, produced by Wong Kar Wai. Um, as I've mentioned in the unboxing, this came about because they went way over budget on a Wong Kar Wai directed film, Ashes of Time. So they switched roles, uh, uh, Jeffrey Lau, his producer, and he essentially switch roles round so Jeffrey Lau would take on directing duties, Wong Kar Wai would produce, they'd use the same cast that they already had together working on Ashes of Time and very quickly knock out a film for Chinese New Year to try and recap some of the cash that they were over budget by. Um, and the result was this, Eagle Shooting Heroes, um, based on The Legend of the Condor Heroes book by uh, by Lewis Cha, which is also the inspiration for The Brave Archer, which I've, I've covered here. I'll leave a link to my Brave Archer review at the end of this video. Um, this is quite an insane movie, very much mad slapstick comedy. Um, it's part of the Mo Lai Tao um, school of, of filmmaking. So it's kind of the, the type of movies that Stephen Chow has popularised over the last sort of 20 years. Um, so very, very broad, um, very big comedy. Um, if um, any of you watching are from the UK, think pantomime. So uh, pantomimes were always something that were on when I was a kid, usually always for New Year. Um, you'd quite often have a lot of big TV stars um, would come together and they'd do a stage version of like Peter Pan or Sleeping Beauty, one of these sorts of stories, but contemporise it in terms of slipping lots of, of kind of modern comedy jokes. Uh, you'd quite often have a lot of the same tropes running through pantomimes. So uh, the female uh, male characters would often be played by female actors and vice versa, particularly if there was any sort of grotesque or ugly characters, they would often be played by men dressed up in drag. So it, it's that type of, of um, very overly theatrical, very big, 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 big comedy. Huge cast of, of really Hong Kong superstars. So we, has, we have Leslie Chung, we have both Tony Lung's Tony Lung Cafe and Tony Lung Chia Wai. We have Veronica Yip, Jackie Chung, Joey Wong and Maggie Chung with action direction duties by Sammo Hung. And there's a lot of action in the movie. It's very 90s based, super sped up and even more sped up than some of the movies that were around from that sort of time. But if you've seen Moon Warriors or you've seen Zoo uh, Warriors of the Magic Mountain, um, to a certain extent, some of the Jet Li, uh, Wong Fei Hung, Once Upon a Time in China movies, that type of slightly hyperbolic, very wire based, um, very over the top um, type of action choreography, but taken to even more of an extreme here where they've they've really undercranked the camera. So people are moving uh, basically comically fast but the choreography at its core is by Samuel Hung so it's still always really entertaining to watch pretty inventive um, and there's quite a few references I'm sure went right over the top of my head but um, for the most part it's pretty easy to follow <clears throat> the subtitle tracks that are on this version are really good and my wife tells me that this has come from the restored version that they made uh, for screening on TVB uh, she's not sure of the exact year, but I think sort of 2016 to 2018 kind of time. Uh, you can tell this because it has this red curtain at the beginning of the movie that kind of leads you into the story. Um, yeah, but to try and give you a, a sort of summary of the film, I'm not going to go too much into depth because it's a pretty complicated story and it's very twisty. But in essence, you have the Queen of the Golden Wheel Kingdom, played by Veronica Yip, who's having a secret affair with her cousin, played by Tony Lung Chao Wai, um, a.k.a. Little Tony. Uh, the two of them are planning to overthrow the, the king and take control of the kingdom. This plot's discovered by the third princess, um, who engages in battle with the two and is defeated. So she retreats back to her master. Uh, master tells her that there's a secret manual. There's always a secret manual in all of these stories. A secret manual that can help her become powerful enough to stop uh, the queen and her cousin. Her cousin, Tony Lung, uh, Tony Lung Chao Wai's character is called West Poison. Uh, so try and stop the queen and West Poison from um, from taking power if she can find the manual, which has been guarded by three monsters in a cave somewhere. Um, so she sets out to try and discover the manual. West Poison hears the plot and tries to intercept. And then um, ultimately the, the princess has to put together a squad of people to try and go up against West Poison because he succeeds in getting the manual before she does and becomes super powerful. That's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, along the way, there's a couple of other characters which get pulled into the fray. Uh, Joey Wong is another student of the third princess's master. Um, her cousin... It's played by Jackie Chung, who's madly in love with Joey Wong, who's not really particularly interested in his advances initially. 
um, and really it plays out as a lot of kind of back and forth between the different characters sort of falling for each other there's a lot of unrequited love between some characters there's um women playing male characters there's a couple of instances of men dressed up playing female characters but that's sort of much more linked into the story than it would normally be in in a pantomime story so they kind of play around with that a lot there's a really bizarre reference to match of the day again if anyone's a bit older and from the uk you might remember the match of the day soccer or football program um that was always on here so they use the theme for match of the day at one stage when they're kicking around a disembodied head which is pretty cool um there's a pretty ongoing uh kind of good fun relationship between uh between little tony uh tony lung chawai and jackie chung's character um who have a battle quite early on which uh, tony lung is unable to win and ends up kind of having to tag along with jackie chung for a big chunk of the film and that's where for me a lot of the comedy that really worked the best kind of came from um tony lung you see here and you also see here he's not playing two different characters this is just the result of his attempts to try and battle against uh, jackie chung which just goes ever more badly no matter what he tries to do he ends up coming off worst and um gets stung by by bees at one point and then ends up ingesting poison which gives him these weird sausage lips um, and his swollen ears as he gets ever more poisoned as things go on um, so yeah overall it's just really pretty madcap um, really good fun um, looks glorious the quality of the transfer here that they've done um, looks incredible so I think it's probably the best that the film has ever looked um, the, the box doesn't state that it has Chinese subs, but it, uh, it definitely does. There's only one language track on here. It's the original Cantonese audio, um, but it's just uh, really pretty, pretty wacky. I think if you're a fan of Stephen Chow's comedies, you'll absolutely adore it. Um, if you just want the novelty of seeing some characters that you'll know well from other movies, particularly with Tony Leung and Maggie Chung, if, if you work together a lot for Wong Kar Wai, if, don't come into this expecting another In the Mood for Love. It's so far away from that. Um, this is really pretty slapstick, but do come into this if you're a fan of, of Shaolin Soccer, if you're a fan of Kung Fu Hustle or of Forbidden City Cop, which has been released, you'll absolutely adore this because the comedy is very much in the same sort of vein. And it's worth mentioning that I think Stephen Chow must have been an enormous fan of this movie because he's pulled a bunch of the jokes straight out of this and dropped them in Kung Fu Hustle. And there's a whole um, extended sequence in Kung Fu Hustle with... Um, knife handles continually breaking off of knives and the blades will be stuck in, in Stephen Chow at various points. That's lifted straight from here. Uh, one of, of Tony Lung's failed attempts to try and attack Jackie Chung. It's the same beat. Um, his knife um, gets stuck in the ground. He ends up just attacking him with a handle, falls backwards onto the blade himself. And um, that's all kind of it's nice to see where it kind of came from. Similarly, also with the, the weird over the top toad style kung fu not Toad Style in the Five Deadly Venom sense, but Toad Style in the way that we saw in, in Kung Fu Hustle. All of that's lifted straight from here. Tony Lung's kind of special moves are all based around that exact same style. And a lot of the same shots, that kind of great um, aerial shot looking straight down on the character as he's in that sort of Toad Style pose. All that comes straight from here. So it'd it be interesting to know um, how much... Stephen Chow just took it from here directly because it seems too much to be just a coincidence that's too similar. So a lot of the beats I think he's just lifted and put straight into Kung Fu Hustle, but um, they work pretty well in this movie and it's great seeing Tony Lung doing some kind of over-the-top Kung Fu. It'd be a while until we saw him doing anything like this. Um, again, really the much more serious uh, Wong Kar Wai movie, The Grand Master, he was back um, doing martial arts really properly, but he holds his own here. You can tell that a lot of the sequences with him fighting against Jackie Chung are definitely him, and he holds his own. He does really, really well. So yeah, I would give it um, overall probably a 7 out of 10, and my wife would probably give it a 10 out of 10. Yes. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> she absolutely adores it. Um, so it's one that I'm really glad that we tracked down. Um, the Nova Media release is the best one that I know of. If anyone else knows of another version of Kiggy Round, then do let us know. Because I'm sure it's one that my wife would be happy to double dip on. But I should wrap this up just now because my neighbours are whooping and hollering outside for no clear fucking reason. So hopefully you're not hearing that and are just hearing me. But thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Check in again tomorrow for another review, I think. I'm probably going to get into The Drunken Master 2 our Forbidden City Cop, um, one of those two over the next couple of days. So yeah, thank you very much. Hope you're all having a great day. Cheers for watching. Bye.